Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Republican Representative Cody Horlocker of McGuanago is seeking re-election in the 33rd Assembly District. Cody, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, my question for incumbent legislators, if you're back, yep. top priority next session. Top priority is working on the victim's clinic for uh, the law school here at UW-Madison. It's an initiative that uh, I've started uh, two years now, uh, working on trying to get students at the law school real world experience before they walk out the door. It's a collabora collaboration between Department of Justice as well as um, the UW to try and set up this clinic. And uh, I think uh, we are on track to actually make this a reality, and I, I hope that is the case because uh, I've continued to push for it the last several years, uh, and I think we're making some really, really good progress on it, but uh, we'll see. I'm really excited about the continued uh, work that my office is going to be doing to make sure that this becomes a reality. Why is that so important to you? Because having gone to law school and uh, come out as a new attorney, I know how vital it is to have real world experience before you walk out that door in order to advocate for folks. Oh. And my work in the district attorney's office in Walworth has given me a passion to help victims. And uh, I think there's a real need uh, for folks um, all across the state that have been victimized that may not otherwise have the uh, means to pay for an attorney to have that representation, both for temporary restraining orders or restitution hearings, right? They, they need a voice and sometimes it's, it's outside their control whether or not they actually do uh, have their voice heard on certain matters. So I, I really think that there's, there's good work there to be done, again, between DOJ and uh, the university. I'm, I'm really excited about uh, the potential there that, that we are working towards. Well, we're talking about UW-Madison. Should the tuition freeze, which has gone on for six years, should that be yeah. continued to a seventh and eighth? Yeah, I mean, right now I'm certainly open to that. I think that keeping the cost of education down for students needs to be a top priority to make sure that we retain Wisconsin students in Wisconsin schools and that uh, they stick around afterwards, right? Because it's great to have family close to home and that's that should be uh, the goal that we're all striving for. Uh, I've certainly talked to folks um, across the district about this and for families who have students going into uh, college here in the next couple of years it's important that we keep those costs down but it's also important that we make sure that we are able to do the things that we need to do in order to educate tomorrow's workforce particularly with Foxconn uh, coming into the state we've got some real opportunities here that we have to make sure that we have a well-educated uh, populace as well as a workforce and that's that's vital now you supported the Foxconn tax breaks but um, how did you vote on the Kimberly Clark? Were you one of those that was a, were, were against it, or correct? So I did support Foxconn for the absolute magnitude and the opportunity that it's going to present to the state. Mm -hmm. uh, I I completely support that decision, and after having visited the grounds of Foxconn, I, I firmly believe that it's going to be uh, transformational for this state. And we've already seen in the 33rd district real world um, growth. Uh, particularly in the Waukesha County area with the amount of new developments and new businesses that are going in. And I'm excited about the prospects of other companies that are coming in to make uh, supplementary uh, goods and services to also contribute to Wisconsin's economy. Now, my vote against the Kimberly Clark deal was primarily based on, look, <sighs> economies of scale on that one as far as the amount of actual impact it was going to have to the state and I don't know that in the long term uh, that is the the best use of taxpayer resources. Let's talk about transportation funding. The impasse on the capital over highways, bridges, maintenance. Um, how would you like it to go forward? Potential solutions? So 
all things are on the table as it relate as it relates to road funding. Now, I've been very public with uh, my complete and utter opposition to toll roads uh, because I think geographically I've not seen the evidence to suggest that it's not going to have a disproportional impact on folks not only in my district but in southeast Wisconsin and the more populous areas of this state. If we're going to have a real solution to transportation funding, it's got to come with everybody uh, paying their fair share. And I don't think that toll roads actually hit on that. Also, I don't want to see us become Illinois. I have a lot of folks that even live in my neighborhood that go back and forth to Illinois for work, right? Um, so just adding uh, more government infrastructure I don't think is going to be the, the solution. Barring that, uh, you know, I'm more than happy to sit down and I think that there's there's a real uh, debate going on between the agricultural com communities as well as business and private citizens on what the actual solution should be. Now, I'm very fortunate because I've never had an incident of not being able to get from point A to point B anywhere in this state and I do travel it quite a bit. Right? I don't think it is the third world uh, roadway system that some are portraying it. Um, however, uh, we do have to make sure that goods and services and that uh, all of our agricultural products get to market. And we have to make sure that we have sound infrastructure uh, to handle that. So absolutely, uh, we do need to make sure that we are doing our due diligence, due diligence on that and making sure that we are working with the department to make sure that the infrastructure is there. But the last resort that should be on the table is going to the taxpayer and saying, look, we need to take more of your money. Not saying that it can't happen. However, I think that that needs to be the absolute last resort. Okay. Um, local governments have been living with levy limits to control property taxes for, yep. I think, 14 years. Yep. Some local officials say that hurts their, their ability to provide local services. Yep. Keep levy limits, loosen them, get rid of them. Here and now, I would say keep them. Keep them. I'm, I'm happy to have that conversation with local municipal uh, officials and leaders and talk about that. But I think that we have to make sure that you know, we keep the price of the cost of living affordable in all of our communities. And I think that was one of the goals of levy limits across the state, right? When I first got into this job, uh, looking at the ability of the locals to decide how much they were going to tax seemed like a local control sort of issue. But when you really look at the, the macro scheme of everything and making sure that this state is uh, maintaining a livable um, taxation policy for all of its residents, I think that is the real policy consideration that we have to take a look at uh, as policymakers at the state level that we make sure that, you know, somebody in Fort Atkinson is not uh, seeing a disproportionate impact as somebody in East Troy. Mm -hmm. The current budget, as you know, significantly increased state K-12 aids. Yep. Do we need another similar big boost in the next budget? What are you hearing from your local school administrator? So, you know, I try and sit down with the local uh, school officials on a, a regular <coughs> basis. Me. Folks uh, generally are very appreciative of the boost in this last budget cycle. And I think that we've also got to take a look and see where the, where the numbers are uh, in January. Uh, when, the, when the next budget comes out in February and see what we have to, to do, right? Uh, I am a, a complete supporter of making sure that we have properly funded schools. Um, we do have to make sure that we are being judicious with what we do and that we're, we're um, making smart decisions with our money, right? So I would not be opposed to spending more money um, on, on K-12 education, but I'm also not here advocating saying that, look, here's what we're going to do and here's why, right? Because between now and the budget cycle, there's gonna be a lot of things in play. And you know, we also have the Blue Ribbon Commission that uh, has been chaired by uh, Rep Kitchens and Senator Olson mm -hmm. that uh, we're looking at doing um, uh, some different things to hopefully uh, give a little bit more flexibility to school districts and really bring them into the conversation. Having traveled around this state with the Blue Ribbon Commission, being at many of the hearings, you know, a lot of input from not only school officials but also concerned parents, teachers, and even the business community on what they'd like to see. 
since I came in in 2014, you know, I've sat down with every administrator and every principal and every uh, business manager in the district and said, look, you tell me your thoughts on the funding formula. I'm not an expert on it, and that's why I want your opinion. And if there's something there that we can do that's going to mean uh, a real positive change for you, let me know, right? So uh, at any point in time, I'm happy to have that conversation with folks about you know what is needed. But I also understand that we can't just be creating winners and losers in this. Uh, if, uh, if we totally uh, wholesale throw out the funding formula and start from scratch, uh, rebuilding that to make sure that nobody loses needs to be the top priority, right? We're not here to pick winners and losers. We have to make sure that it's a good deal for everybody at the end of the day. Voucher Choice Program has grown dramatically. Should it expand <laughs> further or hold where it is or your thoughts? I, yeah, I don't have a problem with uh, voucher, uh, the voucher program or the uh, plurality of options that students have these days. I think uh, particularly if you're in a school district where you know you as the student and you as the parent uh, are deciding that yeah, this just isn't the right fit for little Johnny or little Susie they should be able to make that decision at the parental level of where they want to send their kid to give them the best possible option going forward um, and I think that handcuffing parents um, to stay within a school district isn't um, isn't the right policy decision decision or the right course of action that that we need to take and I think that you know school choice uh, has definitely seen an uptick even within my district as far as students choosing to go to one public school over another one right and I get that's not uh, within the voucher program but it also plays into uh, schools and what they are known for how they market themselves and the amount of programming that they put out and why they do that um, I think that you're going to see uh, going forward that you know more and more um, districts are going to have that competitive advantage that you know depending on what you as a student and what you as a parent want to provide your kids going forward in the future, that's where you're going to send them. How do we protect and expand health care in the rural areas of Wisconsin, Representative? Well, uh, so my bill that I had the last two sessions now um, to put more primary care physicians into the state of Wisconsin. Um, you know, the osteopathic medical school uh, slated for Jefferson, again, was my bill the last two sessions. This is an issue that I certainly care about, making sure that all Wisconsinites have primary care physicians readily accessible, right? Um, so. Obviously, that bill did not make it through the, the last two sessions. Um, and I, as much as I would love it to become reality and be able to put more uh, Wisconsin doctors into Wisconsin uh, communities, mm -hmm. um, I think we have to work within the framework that, that we have um, to be able to make some of those changes, right? We've got to make sure that we are uh, providing residency opportunities for folks in rural and northern Wisconsin. Um, and if that means, um, you know, taking a similar approach of incentives for if you decide to do your residency or stay in a rural community for X number of years afterwards, I'm open to having that discussion because I firmly believe that, you know, if you live in Vilas County, you should have the same primary care options as somebody that lives in Walworth, right? Um, now, the reality of the situation is that it's going to take some time, right? And it is certainly going to take an investment um, on everybody's part, both public and private, to make sure that that becomes a reality. But, uh, you know, putting more doctors into our Wisconsin communities. And let's be honest about this, making sure that our students stay in the state mm -hmm. uh, after they graduate. Right now, 70% of students at the two medical schools graduate with a specialty and, and leave the state. We can't have that. We gotta turn that ship around. 70%. And we gotta, yeah. 70%. Those, those are the numbers that uh, I've seen in the last four years, right? Uh, I'm not sure what they are this, this last graduation uh, session, but, We've got to turn that around. We've got to make sure that our students not only study here, but stay here and give back to this state. Um, that's provided them a great upbringing and a great educational start in the world, right? And uh, it's just, it's good business for all of us to make sure that our kids stay here. 
Um, a legal issue raised by AARP involves caregivers. AARP estimates that 578,000 Wisconsin residents are caregivers. So my question is, would you support laws or regulations that require hospitals to recognize and work with family caregivers when someone they love is hospitalized? Have you I, thought about that issue? So I'm happy to take a look at whatever proposal that AARP has uh, going forward. Um, one of the one of the things that my office has specifically worked on, we, we started last session, we're going to be bringing it back uh, this next session if I'm back, is an advanced directives bill. So for those individuals that have their wishes um, documented, they can upload it into a statewide program. It's not, everybody doesn't have to do it. I want to be very clear about that, that mm -hmm. this is sort of an opt-in uh, process. But, um, you know, many times, particularly for folks um, who are older, uh, something can come up at any point in time and you don't necessarily have, um, you know, that keys to the lockbox or, you know, the contact info for either the lawyer or whoever necessarily has your, your directives. And so we are right now working with um, the hospital communities and physicians to make sure that uh, going forward, we actually have a statewide program uh, to allow folks to make those wishes clear and make sure that you know it's easiest not only for the individual going through that, the family as well as medical providers. So we're trying to bring in all stakeholders on that um, going forward to make sure that that also helps in this decision-making process. Finally, differences between you and your opponent on November 6th? Well, you know, like, like the, the last two times around I've done this now, I just run my race, right? <laughs> and I try and get out to as many community events um, and knock on as many doors and make as many phone calls as humanly possible and know that, uh, look, at the end of the day, I'm here. Even if we disagree on policy, on uh, issue one, two, and three, hey, Let's take a look at issues four, five, and six, because I think there's really uh, a lot of common ground here that, uh, that we can share and that we can work together on. Um, and um, again, I said, like I said, I'm just running my race, and uh, hopefully the voters see the good work that I've done on their behalf in the last four years and my willingness and my passion for continuing to work on their behalf going into January of uh, 2019. Thank you. Republican Representative Cody Hortlocker of McGuanago is seeking re-election in the 33rd Assembly District. Cody, thanks for visiting with Wisconsin Eye. Thank you. Thanks. Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel.